Hello everyone, in this video I am going to tell you about chronic bronchitis. So chronic bronchitis is one of the diseases which comes under a broad spectrum of uh, uh, obstructive pulmonary diseases known as COPD. So in the COPD there are basically two major subtypes. One is chronic bronchitis and another is emphysema. About emphysema we will read in the another video. In this video I am going to tell you about chronic bronchitis. So, what is chronic bronchitis? So, it can be defined as a long-term inflammation of the bronchi leading to productive cough of more than 3 months that are occurring within a span of 2 years. So, this is the basic definition of the chronic bronchitis. The cough in these patient is also known as smoker's cough. So, basically the cough uh, which the patient of chronic bronchitis are having is also termed as smoker's cough. So, what is the main etiology? First, we will go through the main etiology quickly. First, tobacco smoking. Tobacco smoking is the most common cause of chronic bronchitis. Also, long exposure to air pollutants, dust and other irritants which are present in the environment. Third, the people with respiratory diseases like asthma, cystic fibrosis and bronchoactiasis, they basically have a higher predisposition to develop chronic bronchitis because in these patients, the lungs are already having some kind of pathology like asthma, cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis and the alveoli and the spaces of the lungs are not healthy as per se. So they have a higher predisposition to develop chronic bronchitis. So what are the clinical manifestations? So the clinical manifestation of chronic bronchitis include productive cough with mucus hypersecretion. So the patient will be having productive cough with hypersecretory mucus. Another is shortness of breath. Although shortness of breath is not uh, specific for chronic bronchitis because uh, it is more of a emphysemic disorder. So shortness of breath is another clinical manifestation which can be seen in some patient. Another is generalized malaise and fatigue and uh, wheezing. Wheezing in these patients are particularly breathing out. Whenever the patient try to breathe out the air then the wheezing will be occurring. Test tightening and discomfort, sore throat with blocked sinuses and patients are usually obese. In these patients, the uh, patient of chronic bronchitis are usually obese and edematous uh, with uh, some sort of mild sinosis also. So they are also known as blue bloaters. So this is the term given to the patients of chronic bronchitis. Also in the later stages of the diseases, it can lead to core pulmonale. Core pulmonale is the right side of the heart failure. So in the later stages, when if the disease does not correct or the patient did not get any uh, good treatment, uh, then it can lead to core pulmonale in the later stages of the diseases. Also another clinical manifestation, which is although rare, but the risk of amyloidosis is uh, specifically AA type is higher in patient of chronic bronchitis. It is mainly due to the bronchitis term as the inflammation is going on for a longer period of time and it is chronic bronchitis, chronic inflammation you can say. So it can lead to the risk of amyloidosis and amyloidosis which type? AA type. So now let us go through the pathophysiology of this diseases. So the pathophysiology as, as per se if we look around uh, for example, if someone, if a patient comes in the uh, OPD or in the hospital, then he, in 90% of the cases, the patient with chronic bronchitis, the most common cause is tobacco smoke. Or in some 10% cases, it can also be due to air pollutants or irritants. So, what does this kind of thing do? Uh, the constant irritants, the constant irritants from the tobacco smoke, smoke leads to the hypertrophy of the submucosal gland of the bronchial tree. So these irritants will lead to the hypertrophy of the submucosal gland of the bronchial tree. So what will happen if the, there is hypertrophy of the submucosal gland? It will lead to the increase in the number of goblet cells. And basically goblet cells are nothing. They are the protective reaction of the body against the pollutants, irritants and they will release histamine and interleukin-13. But Due to all these changes, there is excess of muc mucus secretion will start secreting, mu excess mucus will be formed and due to excess of mucus secretion, the smooth muscles in the airways becomes thicker and narrows the bronchioles. So mucus will be more secreted, the smooth muscles in the airways become thicker and narrows the bronchioles. 
so when the bronchioles are narrowed the cilia becomes unable to cope with the excessive secretion that will lead to the blocking of airways so the cilia which are the protective lining in the epithelium they whenever the there is hyper mucus secretion uh, it will lead to the leading uh, to the blocking of the airways also known as reversible airways obstruction so until this point it is the whole process is reversible but as the mucus goes deeper into lungs as the mucus goes deeper into lungs and it became harder to clear and the walls of the bronchioles became inflamed so after a certain period of time if the patient does not get any kind of treatment the mucus will lodge deeper in the lungs and it becomes harder to clear the walls of bronchioles and they will become inflamed whenever the inflammation will start the continuous inflammation causes gradual destruction of the bronchioles the continuous inflammation will lead to the destruction of the bronchioles that will result in fibrosis it is also known as irreversible airways obstruction so up till this point it is reversible but once the inflammation goes on for a long time it will lead to fibrosis and uh, after this fibrosis there is irreversible airways obstruction and if this continues the inflammation will spread to the blood vessels and that will be leading to capillary bed wall atrophy and after capillary bed wall atrophy the pressure of the pulmonary circulation will increase and in the later stages of the disease it will lead to cor pulmonale or as you can say right sided heart failure so this is all about the pathophysiology of the chronic bronchitis now let us look at the diagnostic aspect and the treatment of the disease so diagnosis is basically clinically it is done clinically uh, clinically whenever the patient will come then we will ask him that uh, till up to what period he is having cough so the productive cough for at least 3 months for two consecutive years if the patient is having more than 3 months of productive cough from the past two years then it is diagnosed clinically only and uh, after clinical assumption you can also go for pulmonary function testing which is uh, the uh, gold standard is spirometry and in spirometry after giving bronchodilators it is a test which is done after giving bronchodilators we will see in the spirometry the fev1 to fgc ratio if it is less than 0.7 then it is a confirmatory test for chronic bronchitis and uh, this fev1 to fgc ratio uh, it will mainly tell us that and how much lung or how much bronchioles are functioning in that particular patient after that chest x rays can also be done uh, in which we can see increased bronchovascular markings and cardiomegaly but it is basically non specific because uh, these markings and uh, cardiomegaly are only seen in the later stages of the diseases there is another in important index from examination point of view it is read index in read index is also non specific and it is usually a post mortem finding so not as per se it is a diagnostic criteria but uh, the patient who dies due to a uh, chronic bronchitis or after the post mortem we can see what happens uh, in the chronic bronchitis uh, in read index according normally read index is less than 0.4 lekin in chronic bronchitis it is more than 0.5 it is due to the increase submucosal gland uh, the number of submucosal gland when they tend to increase uh, the read index will increase so now we will look at the treatment of the chronic bronchitis so as per treatment uh, uh, first of all we have to stop smoking the most common uh, thing that uh, most of the patient will not do but the most uh, Uh, definitive treatment is first of all is stop smoking then we can give oxygen therapy to the patient third we can also give bronchodilators uh, in which uh, long acting bronchodilators like formoterol and salmeterol are more helpful and muscarinic antagonists like lama and along with laba long active beta agonist can also be given so lamas are basically as aclidinium and glycopyrrolate and inhaled corticosteroids we can also give antibiotics are also given in case of any secondary infection if the patient is having any kind of secondary infection like pneumonia and pulmonary rehabilitation is always there uh, for the chronic stages of the patient if the patient goes or if the patient is having chronic bronchitis from the past 10 15 years also mechanical ventilation support is also given to the chronic bronchitis patient So this is a short summary of the chronic bronchitis I hope you all like it
एंड मेक श्योर टू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब फॉर मोर वीडियोज़ थैंक यू वेरी मच